Good afternoon and Happy New Year and welcome to the Daily Westchester Live. I'm Peter Moses with David Singer. John Charan will be joining us at around the half an hour mark. He had something he had to get done between the end of his previous show and, and our show. Now, I want to get educated today because um, we live in a, in a world now populated by freelance work. There's not a lot of, you know, the, the last full-time jobs I can think of are people who work at the post office and they're supposed to have jobs for life. But apparently that's not true either. So I, I don't know whether there's, a, there's any call in, 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 our first, in our guests' uh, business model for laid-off postal workers. I, I somehow doubt there, there would be. But, um, but we have someone on the show today named Jennifer Ross. And uh, Jennifer Ross, and, but I got her mixed up before we came on. Uh, I was thinking Jennifer O'Neill and Catherine Ross. I, I, I put the two names together and asked if she remembered being on The Graduate. And, you obviously uh, have stars in your eyes. Uh, or cataracts. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not sure which one. Uh, but Jennifer Ross uh, heads up a company in, uh, that's, that has its headquarters uh, in Terrytown. It's a business that sounds like um, – it will have great legs because David and I were talking about this before you came on, Jennifer, and welcome to our show. Thank you very much. It, it, this, this sounds like the kind of business that could be replicated in and around any big city in this country because you have a lot of people who are very good and very professional at what they do, but so many big companies have cut back. Mm -hmm. They need a place to go and, A, to have a, a business location, mm -hmm. and, two, to synergize with other professionals on how to maximize their talents and, and get paid in doing so. And it's, it's called Water Cooler. Her, her business card says, work together independently. Where I thought I was going to say work together, play together, but no, <laughs> work together independently. We do play a lot together. Tell us a little bit about, uh, let's start with the history of it. How is it that you came up with this business? And then we'll get into the viability. And David probably will ask more of those questions because he's the smarter of the two of us. I don't know about that. Well, uh, being a freelancer myself and doing a lot of jobs over the years, I've often occupied uh, fully my dining table um, <laughs> to the dismay of the other family members. Um, I certainly have a home office, and, and many of the people who work at Water Cooler do have home offices, but um, for the most part, co-working is, is based on the model that people tend to work better, harder, faster, more diligently uh, without the distractions of home. And most of the members at Water Cooler do have home offices, but uh, when you get to Water Cooler, you really don't have all the distractions that you do at home, and you also have everything you possibly need to run your business. So if you run out of paper, if you run out of toner, we have everything there that one would need to run a small business uh, independently. Uh, and, and when did you open your business? We opened June 1st of this year, or actually of last year now. So it's a nascent new business. We are seven months old. Um, it's a 1,600 square foot space. It's basically a large loft-like space with a lounge area in the center. And then around the periphery, we have full-time and part-time desks. I'm happy to say that our five full-time desks are now currently uh, rented to people for the next uh, few months, uh, one for a full year. Um, the full-time people have the option to be there anytime they want. They have a key. Uh, they have access to the conference room uh, eight hours a month. Um, and then the part-time people, they come more on an a la carte basis. We have five, 10, and 20-day passes and hourly cards that people can purchase and use as they need them. And how many businesses right now are uh, utilizing your service? And how many can you, in, in, I mean, in the space that you have, what would be the max? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, we have 52 members at this point uh, that includes anyone who gets their mail there through the people who occupy the private office. So on any given day, we might have anywhere from three to 12 people there. And um, tell us a little bit about the kinds of businesses that are there and the kind of businesses you're working to, to get there. Because I see a, a photo. I don't, I don't think the, the little camera there can, can pick it up. But mm -hmm. uh, they can go to your you, – you have a website, right? It's watercoolerhub.com. So watercoolerhub.com if you want to – and on this site – there's photographs of uh, of the workspaces, which are quite attractive. Mm -hmm. um, there, it's, it's not uh, you know a wood grain paneled law office uh, of the of yesteryear with uh, you know desks that came from the 19th century. It's much more urbane and um, 
I uh, I stopped by the uh, I stopped by uh, Jennifer's uh, office uh, last week, and it's a it's terrific it's a terrific setup. It's right in the heart of downtown Tarrytown, so one of the one of the downtowns in Westchester County that really has a downtown where there's you know places to go for coffee, to eat, to shop, to do do whatever. So it it sort of feeds off that vibe a little bit, as opposed to being housed in like a sterile sort of suburban office right. park. Well, I, I read a profile uh, that was uh, that appeared on January first in uh, in the local newspaper, and, and uh, not in the in the news sites that I work for, but for in Lowhud. And uh, did you, did you get the sample of the free coffee, David? Because apparently they offer free coffee. Um, I I was offered I was offered coffee. I was offered a salad, but I I refused because salad. I, yeah, I I was offered I was offered food and drink oh, and nice. water cooler hub. At least from when I was there, it was also pet friendly. Yes, anyone can uh, bring their dog. We have Rufus on occasion. He's a white standard poodle uh, brought in by our organizer, Lily Weiss. And what does that mean, your organizer? T- t- oh, I'm t- sorry. T- let's, she, let's, go, <laughs> let's go through the setup. Uh, organizer in the sense that that's her profession. She's a professional organizer. Oh, that's what, oh she's not organizing no. your business. No, that's She my organizes. But does she help you organize your business? Do you get a little – I mean, one of the things – I mean, and, and I work for um, Main Street Connect, and it's a, it's a series of online news sites. And one of the problems, and, and, and it's becoming a bigger problem, at least for me, with some of the editing that I'm doing, um, if I was sitting next to somebody, it's a lot easier to ask questions and to, and to uh, synergize with them because you're actually there. I don't like to pick up the phone and start bothering people on the phone. So I'm wondering um, how, that, how that's working over there for you because I, I think that one of the things that gets people's minds moving quicker and better and the synapses of the brain are more active, is when you can collegially have a conversation with somebody. And that's, and that's a really a large part of co-working is, is the collaborative nature of, of the beast. And, and there is a tremendous amount of exchanges that go on every day from knowledge sharing to actual kind of windshield surveys. Uh, for example, one of our members is a museum consultant, and she was working with her iPad the other month to develop a questionnaire for, uh, I believe it was the Smithsonian down in, in D.C., and she... Um, wanted to run it by a few of us. So she, she basically went around the room and had everybody take this one uh, questionnaire, 10 questions that she was developing. And by the time she had gotten all of our feedback, she changed it a number of, in a number of ways and was able to then send something to her client that made much more sense and had actually been through a round of um, usability. Edit. She could work yeah. it out. So it, it's really a terrific space for that. Um, we have a lot of people in the marketing and design industry, so you can ask questions about kerning. You can ask questions about press releases. You can get design advice. Um, we have lawyers. We have um, uh, art consultants. Uh, we have IT guys. Uh, really the gamut of industries at this point. And what kind of rent do they pay on a, on a monthly basis? Well, a, a full timer pays either five hundred or five seventy five, depending on the size of the space, and that's full full time. Their own designated desk, a key, uh, locking file. That's very reasonable. Underneath. Which which is which is interesting because I've I've done a little bit of research in the office suite market, and <clears throat> the lowest I've heard is generally between eight fifty and a thousand dollars a month for, for a hers, private yeah. office. Yeah. Um, and this is just for a desk. You're sitting among, you know, right next to other people. There, there's a little bit of space in between the full-time desks, but the hot desks, as they're called, which are my part-timer desks, are really quite close to each other, but people tend to plug in. They put their ear sets on if they really don't want to be disturbed. And um, it, it's fairly quiet in there. Even on a day when there's, you know, half a dozen people, they're all pretty diligent. They're, you know, they're working. They, they, they'll connect. It's a collegial occasion. environment, in other words. Yeah, they, they, we're really in... in, in a big, large room amongst each other, and there's a certain level of respect that has to go on in order to coexist. Any issues so far? I mean, have you had people who, what if people don't yeah. seem to get along? Have you had those kinds of things no, or not? everybody no? gets along. On occasion, you have one person that will have a loud conversation, but we do have a phone booth, and we encourage people who are on the phone to hop into the phone booth. You have a phone? I missed that. Oh, you <laughs> didn't see it. It now has a Superman costume in it, thanks to my <laughs> mother-in-law. I'm very excited about that. Uh, it has a chalk wall, so you can you know scribble yourself notes when you're bored. Or I'm reminders. assuming there's actually really no phone in there. It's just you go in there and have your loud cell phone conversation. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so we, we do encourage people to do that. We also have a, you know, the, the closing door conference room where if people want to just escape and be on the phone for a while, they're welcome to do that as well. 